Thank you for listening to Dialogues on Democracy, celebrating IFAS's 25th anniversary. I'm Joseph Marcus. Each year, IFAS's Joe C. Baxter Award honors a professional committed to the principles of local ownership, transparency, and sustainability of electoral administration. This year, IFAS celebrates the work of Mr. Christian Monsoud. Mr. Monsoud is a strong advocate for democratic and social reforms in the Philippines. Mr. Monsoud is the former chairman of the Philippine Commission on Elections, founder and honorary chairman of the Legal Network for Truthful Elections, Lente, and the pioneer of the National Citizens Movement for Free Elections, NAMPRA. Can you please tell us about your work with NAMPRA to help usher in democratic institutions? When President Marcos uh, called for an election in the parliamentary system, NAMPRA was there uh, in order to conduct parallel count. Uh, voter education, uh, poll watching, and uh, voter assistance on election day. Uh, we were able to mobilize 500,000 volunteers all over the country. After the elections, the Comelec's official results showed Marcos as the winner. However, Namfrail's parallel count differed vastly from those of the Comelec, and many denounced the official results as fraudulent. This led to the People Power Revolution, this movement forced Marcos into exile and allowed Cory Kino to take the presidency. How was Namfrel able to recruit so many people? It was easier to mobilize or recruit the poor people to the cause. They would just ask, will this get rid of the dictatorship? And we'd say yes, we work together hard on this, we, we could get rid of the dictatorship. And they said, then I'll sign up. Nine volunteers died. All of them came from the poor. You were then appointed by Cory Aquino as head of the Comelec. Please share with us your experience as head of the Comelec. I had transferred from head of an NGO that was working with and sometimes against the Comelec. Then I went on the other side, became chairman of the Commission on Elections. My responsibility was to bring the credibility of the Comelec, and it was difficult. I decided that I would work with the same people who were in the Comelec. And I went all over the country and visited all the offices. And I said, I'd like just to request that you give a gift to the Filipino people to make these elections clean and credible. That's all I ask. And one of them stood up, a lowly in, um, employee in the provinces. He said, you know, we are like tributaries of a river. If the source of the water is clean, we are clean. If the source of the water is dirty, we are dirty. Are you dirty or clean? And I said, you know, I can't answer you now, but you can find the answer, give me a few months, and you decide if I'm sincere. And if you're convinced that I'm, I'm, a, I'm a reformer, then follow me. You were credited with building the modern Kamalek, and in 1992, you oversaw the first peaceful transition of power. How did you build the credibility and modernize the Kamalek? Part of the cheating system was to delay things so that you can cheat. You can change documents, you can uh, buy off people at certain levels and so on. The, the principal solution was to automate the counting because then almost automatic will go be correct. So if you, speed it, if you speed it up, it cannot be done. There's not enough time. So we put together a modernization program that included automated counting. It also included the training of, of officials, of the employees of the Comelec. The key to clean the fair elections are the people at the ground level. They're the ones who deliver elections, it's not us in central office. So those are the people that you have to empower. I think the potential of the bureaucracy to move the country it's tremendous. You just have to harness it properly and put it in the right direction. In 1995, you stepped down from the Comelec, but you have continued to advocate for democratic reforms and started Lente. Tell us about that. I'm back in the civil society. I'm back on the civil society side. Uh, uh, I've changed hats again. Uh, the girls of uh, Lente, uh, to be an a, uh, election watchdog, uh, to assist the other watchdogs on the legal on the legal aspects uh, also when when they're um, accused of anything uh, or harassed uh, to be their lawyers and to also attend to the issue of making sure that the legal framework and the laws and 
implementing rules uh, are applicable and, uh, and implementable and that they're correct. Uh, so that's part of the, the overall view of Lente about elections. It's amazing how in our country the spirit, you know, volunteerism of lawyers crossing the social divide in order to help others is such is part of the lifeblood of the system and give us hope. But it's taking a long time. There is still a lot of work to be done, but IFAS has been in the Philippines for over a decade now in a variety of capacities. How has IFAS and Lente worked together to further the credibility of the electoral process? Uh, IFAS is, uh, is working on, uh, with, with Lente on empowerment and training. Uh, Training of uh, training of our lawyers on electoral work, and uh, and then exposing uh, Lente people to what's happening in other parts of the world, and this process uh, of interaction uh, among election officials all over the world cannot but be a, a, a positive force in improving the quality of elections. I think the relationship between IFES and Lente is uh, is excellent. Uh, we, we're fortunate we have good people on on, uh, on both sides. IFAS would again like to congratulate you on receiving the Joe C. Baxter Award. What does this award mean to you? Uh, the Joe Baxter Award is, is, uh, was an unexpected honor. Uh, I, I also thought uh, that to myself, you know, I was chairman of the COMELEC uh, 20 years ago. Right? Uh, and maybe one of the reasons or main reason for my getting the award is I simply outlived everybody else. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but I, I was told no, uh, the, the, the um, you know, the, the framework uh, of the plan for the modernization of the comedy is still being followed and, and a lot of people rely on me for my work, uh, even, after my chairmanship, uh, of course, I gladly accepted the award. Throughout your career, including when you were on the committee to draft the Filipino Constitution, you have been a steadfast advocate for the rights of the poor and marginalized populations. And even during your acceptance speech for the 2012 Baxter Award, you spoke strongly about social justice and social reforms. How have these concepts shaped your work? What? what elections are about and what democracy is about, make it more meaningful to our poor. Uh, to them, you know, voting is fine. We love it because at least they have the power to vote. But democracy must mean more to them than just voting in elections. And so that's what we're trying to do. Mr. Monso, again, thank you very much. It has been a real honor to speak with you. For more dialogues on democracy or information about Mr. Christian Monsot, please visit our website, www.ifis.org.